Daniel chapter 2, verse number 1. So, in the second year, the reign of Nebuchadnezzar. So you probably could Google Nebuchadnezzar and find out what year he began. This is the second year. And Jerusalem has not been totally captured yet. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams. Now look, look at it. Look how funny that. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams. What is that? I don't know, but there's something to that. Holy Spirit has something to Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, dream dreams. Now, that's much better than, I have a dream. Wherefore his spirit was troubled. So he has his dream and he wakes up. And he can't get back to sleep because his sleep break from him. What is his dream about? Why did I dream that? I mean, is it the pepperoni pizza I had last night or what? I have not ever had a dream like the dream I've had. It troubles me. And it's funny because when we won't tonight get into that dream, it ain't a frightening dream. And the frightness of the dream comes to be when he finally gets somebody. I'm not going to tell you who it is. Some people haven't even read Daniel. Dare to be Daniel. I never read Daniel. I didn't even know Daniel was a book in the Bible. I love to tell the story that I never have witnessed the gospel. Sometimes your songs are sung in the church makes a person a sinner by lying before God. Sweet hour of prayer I never did. Chalk it up as a lie. So it's a dream that causes trouble and break from either it woke him up or he's trying to go back to sleep and he can't. You ever had that one dream? You, you, you dream it, you get up. And you go to the valley, whatever you do, and you, and you want to dream that dream again. You want to continue that dream. You want to find out, hey, what happens in this dream? I had a dream like that one time, long time ago. Uh, I was scuba diving and found this, this submarine down the bottom of the thing. And I got myself into that submarine, and I fired a torpedo. Boom, as soon as that torpedo go, I mean... It, it ain't gonna happen. But as soon as that torpedo, I woke up. And I went back to bed and I tried and tried and tried and tried to redream that. I still sometimes think about that dream. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe he wanted to. Let me finish this dream. It troubled. It didn't say terrified. It troubled. Then the king commanded. <laughs> I mean, today, the president. Well, the president. The media, can I say that? The Democrats, am I okay to say this? Republicans, am I allowed to do this? What about you people over there? No, the command, the command is by a king to call the magicians, the astrologers, and the sorcerers. Now, we're going to read at the close of today. These are the wise men. These are the, the, the scholars. And the Chaldeans. If there's anybody in the kingdom that knows, knows something, it's supposed to be these men. No Chaldeans. They're in the wise men. They're also among the fierce army that will go into These Chaldeans were fierce, wise men. They're an offshoot. Of Babylon, not Babylon, they're just south of the Babylonians. Sort of like you got the United States and we got other little territories, maybe you know, like Puerto Rico. For to show the king his dream. No look 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 at verse one. S look at verse two. S. That's plural. 
So when we look at the dreams we're going to see not tonight, you're going to see it's dreams, plural. The Holy Spirit knows when he puts an S at the end of a noun. He knows completely what that means. It's more than one. And we go reading, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we got, a, we got enough bread today to finish through the year, but I didn't study. So they came and stood before the king. Now, for whatever reason, Daniel and, and the Hebrew boys are not there. Things would have been a lot better if Daniel and the Hebrew boys were there. <coughs> and I'm okay, Senator. My dream, the dream. Oh, wait a minute. No, sorry. You know that guy went to school to be a reverend? He knows the Bibles. He knows what the Bible says just as much as what Luther, Lucifer knew what the Bible to say. And the people who knew him up close denied any Christianity of MLK. Even his own wife. They used religion to get their political point through. The king said to him, I have dreamed the dreams. Singular. And my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Singular. He's going to walk the whole dreams into one dream when he finally tells it. Then spank the Chaldeans to the king in Syria. Now, from now to chapter 7, verse 29, we are out of Hebrew language. We are in the Syriac language, in the Syriac language, the Bible's written in three languages. It's written in Hebrew, it's written in Greek, and it's written in Syriac. Here we go. Up to chapter 7, verse 29. And this is an offshoot Babylonian Jewish language. It's a Gentile Jewish tongue. For the Jews who don't like Gentiles. O king, live forever. Now, that, that, that's, that's a greeting. How do you do, sir? Your honor. And in actuality, the king will live forever. Man may die of the body, but he has the eternal life. I believe Nebuchadnezzar gets saved, and that won't be tonight. I believe he's going to be in heaven. And we'll get to that. Tell thy servants, not slaves, they have the freedom to serve the king or they could leave. And we will show the interpretation. All right, king, this is what we want. You tell us what you dream and we'll get our little books out. We'll run down to the store, we'll run down to the checkout and get that little book next to the candy bars and, and the soda. You know, and we have to wait for the checkout and to buy the junk they got there that we shouldn't be buying was junk. There, a book on, oh, dreams. You know, right next to the, you know, the, the word finder and, and time life. And we'll get, we get the little book right here. Fred over there, he's got a brand new one. More up to date. Okay, so they get the books over there. Okay, we're okay. We're gonna we're gonna take this drink. All right, he, he, you know if it's an ego, that means something. If it's okay, the king answered, said to the Chaldeans, "Who knows? They're the ones that speak. The thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the drink, I don't remember it." Now, we don't know if the king is telling the truth. Or he's putting them up for a play. But we do know that when somebody comes in, I don't want to give away the story. When somebody comes in and tells the king the, the, the dream, the king, that's it, that's the one. We don't know if his memory comes back when it, it's being told. Or, you know what? I want to see if you guys are really who you are. 
with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces. So if you don't tell me what the dream is, and you don't tell me what it means, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cut your body. I'm not even gonna cut off your neck. I'm not only gonna remove your head from your body, I'm gonna cut you in different pieces. And your houses shall be made a dunghill. Now not that is poo poo, caca. Four letter word I can't say. And what they would do is they would take an area, they would put dung, fertilizer, and then they put straw and hay and then it's also dung is you know the red light district. The scum of the city. And I'll make your house and the neighborhood neighboring of your house, I'll make it a filthy place to live. And those people, this is this is skid row. Yeah, thanks to that guy over there who couldn't tell the king his dream. Oh, Pew, what is that smell? Uh, that's that Chaldean over there. He he had, he lied to the king, and now we gotta put up with this smell. Either or. I mean, have you ever had your neighbor have a, have a dump truck load of uh, manure come dump in their yard? Or it's like, oh, man. You couldn't do that when I had the windows closed. You got to do it when the windows are going to be open. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive the gifts, plural, and rewards, plural, and great honor. I'll put your name in the newspaper. I'll take your picture and put you up on the wall. I'll give you your own parking place for your camel. Therefore, show me the dream. There's a command. Show me the dream. That's a command. That's not asking. And the interpretation thereof. That's a command. They answered again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show you the interpretation. We can't tell you what you dream. And the king answered and said, I know of a certainty that ye would gain the time. You, you know what you're doing? You're buying time. You're stalling. You're wasting my time. Because you see the thing is gone for me. Listen, stop it. Shut up. I don't remember the dream. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. And that decree is an order. That decree is a command. It is a legal document that... Nail it down. You can't do what you said you can do. That's like you need a plumber and you call the plumber and, and he advertised we can do leaks and we can do potties and we can do it. And he comes in and he says, I can't do it. Well, I am ordering you. I'm going to go to the better business. Practice. You have got false advertising. They're false advertising. They claim to be who they can't be. God has nailed these men to the wall. And we don't know if Nebuchadnezzar really doesn't remember or if he's playing them out. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me. Now that can't be the United States government because the rulers have prepared lying and corrupt words. Everybody in America, they're lying and they got corrupt words when it comes to politics. There's no one speaking the truth. And if you don't believe me, look at this COVID-19 and, and, this, and this flu thing going around. Get a mask, get a shot, get a booster. Can't go here, can't do that. Got you, you got the media, you got the CDC, you got the president, you got the Democrats, you got the Republicans, and you got doctors, and you got... And, uh, 
What is the answer? He got lying and corrupt words. You say, well, you can't say that. If it was true and proper words, everybody would be saying the same thing. There would be no argument. To the, to the time be changed. And he's like, and he, he's, listen, you're wasting my time. I'm, I'm tired of this. Guarantee the king now is angry. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can show the interpretation. Not only do you interpret it, you better tell me what it is, and don't waste my time no more. I want that dream right now, right here. Chaldeans answered the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. I'll show you in a moment something. Therefore, there is no king, lord, or ruler that asks such things of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. All right, except for the Chaldean. Take your Bibles to Genesis 41. Some scholars don't know their Bibles. In Genesis 41, 7, the close of the dream. We're not going to read the whole dream. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank full ears. And Pharaoh awoke. Uh-oh. He was sleeping and he had this dream. And behold, it was a dream. And when it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. Sound familiar? And sent and called the magicians of Egypt. Sound familiar? And all the wise men. Sound familiar? They may not have been Chaldeans, but maybe the group of Chaldeans was there. Not under the name of Chaldeans. There was a time that there were people of America, but they weren't Americans. They were European. Got what I'm saying? And Pharaoh told them the dream. All right, so he tells them the dream, unlike Nebuchadnezzar. And there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Now we know that the baker, I mean the butler, gets up and says, listen, there's a man in prison, he can interpret the dreams of Joseph. And God interprets the dream through Joseph. Alright? So back to Daniel. Somebody didn't know their Bible. He says, verse 10, there's no king, lord, or ruler. How about Pharaoh? Of any magician, child, or a Chaldean. Now look at, it, at the end of verse 12. Destroy all the wise men. That's exactly, and his name magicians of Pharaoh. Pharaoh had a dream, and he tells the interpretation, and they couldn't get the interpretation. All right, maybe Pharaoh didn't tell him what the dream is. But the context is there. Don't you say no other king. In that little loophole. Well, you know, he told them what the dream was. You gotta find a loophole. Because they're nailed on the spot. They're phonies. I love I, I'm here in Daytona Beach and we got this little flea market down here, and they got a booth, well they used to, uh, the, the tarot card woman, you know, psychic woman. And I, it's funny, because every time I do this, there's somebody sitting in there, they have their palm bread or whatever it is. I'll poke my head, did you know I was coming? If she knew I was coming, she would prevent me from coming, from saying that. You don't know nothing. 
I asked one time, well, I, I said, if you're a psychic, how come you don't play the lottery and use the money for good? Because the reason I said use the money for good, because if I say, why don't you play it? Well, I'm not supposed to be doing things for my own equal, you know, my gain. Well, all right, how about you don't play the lottery and then you win the money and use it for charities and all that? And, you know, we're not supposed to use our talents for that. Well, as much as, and I've dealt with a couple healers. Come on, I know two hospitals in, in this area. Let's go. Yeah. You're a phony. You're a phony baloney. And baloney is not kosher. It's a rare thing that the king required. And there is none other that can show it before the king. When we get finished with Daniel 2... Made them a liar because there is a man that's going to step up to the plate. And he's going to tell them exactly what the dream is. And he's going to tell them the interpretation of that dream. And he's going to give God the Father Jehovah the credit. Except the gods. Small G-O-D-S. Well, not the gods. God, capital G-O-D. Who dwelleth is not with flesh. I mean, they're they're in that that paradise, you know, that whatever the, the heaven is for the Babylonians. They don't come down and dwell. And that's funny because the Babylonians have gods that come to the earth. The Babylonians have gods that are human, not human, and all other garbage. Like Tammuz and Esther. whose day you're going to be celebrating in the Catholic Baptist Church. You call it Easter. How did he get Easter in that one? You quit, you quit worshiping Easter in the, in the Baptist Catholic Church, and I will shut up about Easter. Okay? For this cause, the king was angry and very furious. There is trouble in Babylon. And commanded to destroy all the wise men. If you were smart in Babylon, not only the men are standing before the king right now, but if you were wise. Because we're going to find out that Daniel and the three Hebrew boys are also included in this death warrant. You don't mess with me. You know why America doesn't want a king? Because you don't want a tyrant. You don't want anybody with an exact authority as much as the Christian does not want an exact authority and an invaluable valuable. I had a... I had a Christian tell me who's in, who who gives a, a Sunday school class. Oh, I don't think any Bible is inerrant. Then you need to sit down and shut up. And I don't care that this this is being recorded. I'll tell the past that guy needs to shut up and sit down. Because you're telling me that there's no inerrant Bible, which I believe is the absolute King James Bible. Then you're telling me that God's a liar. God is unable to preserve a one holy Bible. You don't believe that. You need to sit down and shut up. And you tell them, Dr. Stiley William Hayward said that. And I will go to the faggots. Believing. That the King James only is the inerrant, absolutely without error, the word of God in the English for Christians today. Before that was the Geneva Bible. How do you get off on that? And the creed, see the decree? This is the law. You know what the law was of these kings? You couldn't change the law. If the king said, all right, 
Your camel can only go 55 miles per hour or whatever. I don't know if they use miles, but. Well, you know, Your Honor, we did a study. And on how we can see safely that camels can do 60. No, I said 55. But we can. The law is 55 and I signed it and that's it. You can't say nothing about it. When the king signed Haman's order to kill all the Jews, he could not reverse it, even though the queen was sitting there in tears. The only thing he could do was protect yourself. He could not erase Haman's orders. The decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, killed. And they sought Daniel and his fellows. Daniel and his fellows are not there. So this decree is anybody who's wise. The next day, the children would go to school. They will sit in their little desk in Babylon. And the Babylonian alphabet will be on the four walls. And the instructor and the teacher would never show up that day. Of the schools and the universities in Babylon. And they would be declaring, making Babylon one of the fifth great wonders of the world. They hanging by, they would go over there and, and I don't know what their names were. They had weird names. Well, we got to update the blueprints for this thing here. Where's the architect? He's dead. What happened? Was it an accident? Was it cancer? No, the king had them killed. Anybody who was smart, anybody who had wisdom, they were killed. It didn't say a wise man with... I'm trying to think of some wise men with a certain degree. All the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows, his partners, the people who are working with him. So here is this is important. As we talk about Daniel in the lion's den, we talk about Shadrach, Shadrach, and the go in, in the fiery furnace. Yes, true. But here's the first time that Daniel and his fellows, their life is on the neck right now. The second chapter in Daniel, Daniel and his fellows, the three Hebrew boys, their life is already in bounds. Because the king said, kill all the wise men. And God saves Daniel and the three Hebrew boys and the magicians and the astrologers and the scientists and the Chaldeans. They're all saved. There is salvation from death by a type of Jesus, a man named Daniel, who was wiser. There are three the wisest beings ever to be in the Bible. Jesus Christ, all wisdom. Satan. He says, thou art wiser than Daniel. I think it's Job. And then there's Daniel. You say, well, what about Solomon? Where did Daniel bow down before other gods? He didn't. Solomon did. 
Solomon's salvation is going to be in heaven is declared before Solomon was born when he, when God told David, your son is always going to be my son, forever to be my son, and if he fails me, if he goes against me, I'm going to chastise him like a Christian. And with the wisdom, there's only two men that remain faithful to God. Jesus Christ and Daniel. You better be careful. I want to be dare to be a Daniel. You better be careful singing that song. Because if you don't want to lose it all, there are hymns that are sung in churches that I attend. And you'll see my mouth moving. And you won't believe what I'm saying while they're singing that, while they think I'm singing that song. But I'm not singing that song. But my mouth is worth other things. Daniel, Lions, Dan, Shadrach, Meshach, and go in, in the fiery furnace. No, no. Let's go to where Daniel and the three Hebrew men, their lives are in danger right now. And their salvation given to Daniel to save everybody. Sound familiar? There is salvation for three Hebrew boys in the fire when the fourth is the Son of God. You get that? And then there is salvation when he's in the lion's den, Daniel. And God came down and shut the mouth of the lions. Our adversary rose about as a roaring lion. There's only one that can shut the mouth of the devil. And that's not even Michael, the archangel. Mark, the archangel Michael goes up to the devil over the body and says, And the Lord rebuked thee. And then he forgot the other one. When the when the, the Medes come and take over the city of Babylon, who's there the next morning when the battle's over? Daniel. Like Jeremiah, the entire city is taken and destroyed in the temple, and Jeremiah is in prison. The Babylonians come and open up the door. How you doing? You know why this all happened? Because Judah sinned against God. You did a very good job of preaching. No, no one listened to you. Here's some bread, here's some money, and if you want to go here or you want to go there, you do what you want to do. That's amazing God we got. He protected Jeremiah when the city was destroyed, and he protects Daniel when the city's overtaken. And Daniel remains faithful throughout the book. I have failed, I have faltered many times. 